Welcome back, everybody, to Toronto Today here on The Parlay. I'm your host, Luca, alongside my co-host, Michael. And we got another great show for you in store on this Tuesday. We're going to be talking about the Leafs there in action, along with the Raptors. Both those teams look to uh, win another game. And then we're going to get into some TFC news, followed by our best bet of the night. Mike needs one, so uh, I'm looking forward to who he's got <laughs> later on because he he desperately needs to get on the board with a win. Sorry to put you on the spot there, Mike, but Mike, how you doing, man? I know you're coming off a loss, but uh, how, how was your night? How was your night of watching sports? Man, the Bucks let me down last night. The Bucks let me down. I put all my faith in the defending NBA champs to bounce back and not lose two in a row to Charlotte, but... And they couldn't do it. They couldn't pull it off. And once again, scary Terry, Terry Rozier comes back to haunt me. So not doing too great this morning, Luke, on that regard. But overall, yeah, just another wild night of, of sports. Obviously, you bet on the college football game, the national championship, which is just an absolute wild game. Football is going, going pretty crazy right now, isn't it, man? Yeah, I don't know how anybody cannot watch football. Over the last 48 hours, some stellar action. The Sunday nighter was epic. And then that Monday night football game, unreal i'm talking about the national championship game I, I knew it was too good to be true a lot of people were going with bama just because they were that slight dog but like i told you off air mike georgia was due they, they were this is a team that hadn't won it in 40 years bama always had their number and they were the better team going in georgia so they took care of business and they were actually down by five but then they managed to come back, you know, going into the fourth quarter and beyond. So credit to them. I'm happy for them. And uh, yeah, all of a sudden, Georgia Atlanta is a title town, right? The Braves winning the World Series, Georgia winning the national championship. The Hawks obviously aren't following suit. They're struggling the season along with the Falcons. But yeah, there was definitely a major party going on last night in Georgia after that epic win. Do you think people are still coming home from the bars and stuff? Do you think they're still like out there, like making their way back home or are they, do you think they're wrapped up by now? It's 11 a.m. by the time we're recording this. You know what? There, there's some passionate fans over there. Like college football, <laughs> it's, it's a different breed. That's one thing I got on my bucket list that hopefully I can get to, you know, when this pandemic calms down and that's go to a college football game. Because you see on TV, like these guys get hyped for it. I would argue like the fans for college football, like some of the, you know, uh, stadiums, they're more passionate than some NFL fan bases. Like these guys go all out. They're drinking from the AM. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them are still partying, especially since they hadn't won it in 40 years. So yeah, I, I mean, if we, we are betting on that, I'm saying there's still people coming home because of that, you know, <laughs> big win. It, it would be the equivalent of the Leafs, you know, winning the Stanley Cup after all those years. It'd be as crazy as that, I would think. Yeah, you seem like the type of guy that would still be out there right at the bars in Luca. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to make a comment on that, but uh, we are going to begin our show talking about the Maple Leafs. They're coming off that loss where they blew a 4-1 lead, and now they're going to be sticking to the West Coast as they're going to be taking on the Golden Knights. So this one's interesting, Mike, because uh, it started with uh, both teams even on the money line, but now the Leafs are a slave favorite, minus 127. And right now, 66% of the action is coming in on the Leafs. Now, obviously, a lot can change between now and puck drop. But right now, the Leafs are slight favorites. So going into this game, do you like the Leafs' chances of winning this game outright? Yeah, I, I definitely do. I think in their last five games against Gold, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, they are 4-1 and one straight up. And just they're 4-1 and one straight up in their last five games. So I can't see a reason right now to think otherwise I was actually a little bit surprised when the odds first came in and they were even on the money line and I saw a lot of people just smashing that that leaves straight up so I'm with them there like there's no reason really to think otherwise the only reason you you'd do that is if you had a hunch that Vegas would have a big night um, Vegas also missing one of their most important players in Max Pacioretty obviously the Leafs are missing Marner so that kind of cancels each other out but I think Leafs have a little bit more depth than the Vegas Golden Knights do right now and Vegas aren't you know, they're a good team, but I don't know if they're kind of how good they were the last couple of seasons. So I like the Leafs odds, and for whatever reason, they get up for these games against Vegas. Yeah, the uh, the Leafs are 9-3 and three straight up in their last 12 games against an opponent in the West. So they have done relatively well on the West Coast, and let's call it for what it is. I mean, they had that game on Saturday, so that should have added to this uh, stat here. Yeah, I like the Leafs here too, and I think uh, if you were looking at these odds early, if you were able to grab the Leafs when they were 
you know, a, a slight underdog or even when it was even, like they're laughing right now because anytime you can get the Leafs as a slight underdog, like you smash that all day because this is a team that they shouldn't be, you know, an underdog in, you know, almost every game that they play in, they're at least going to, you know, be in it just with the amount of talent they have out there on the ice. So, yeah, I think Pacioretty being out is going to be a huge loss for uh, the Golden Knights. And I think this is a game the Leafs are going to come in, you know, pissed off. Obviously, they had that last game in the bag. Expect them to have another great start to this one. I don't think they're going to blow another lead. And I do think they're going to go into Vegas and win this game uh, straight up. So I think it's a good uh, bank for your buck to trust the Leafs in the spot. I mean, this has been a team. I can't believe I'm saying it. They have been a pretty safe bet over the last couple of weeks. I mean, if you want to make some easy coin, you know, bet on the Leafs and bet on the Raptors. That's kind of been the recipe for success in the betting world. And who would have thought that? Yeah, especially at at, at that value, right? At, at what it is now. What is it? Mine just 127. Yeah. And yeah, there's no reason right now to really bet against the Leafs, especially when they're, they're giving you that value. And I'm interested to see kind of why the odds are Vegas – believes the odds should be that that close are we, is there something that they know that we don't know uh perhaps hey maybe that is the case but like i said history is on the Leafs side especially when playing in las vegas and another thing i'll point out is is austin matthews as we touched on a little bit yesterday like he's a guy who likes to score in bunches he likes to score like when he gets hot he gets red hot and you know he had a two goal game on saturday night He's going to be without his partner in crime, Mitch Marner. So it kind of puts more of the focus on him to do a little bit more for that line. Um, but I, again, I like, I like what I'm seeing there. And I'll also highlight, you know, the play of Alex Kerfoot. Um, I think he's, I mean, clearly he has done a lot because I think he's coming into this one with eight points in his last three games, which I mean, is, is crazy numbers for someone like Kerfoot who is really hasn't been a point per game player. Um, his entire career so he's really stepped his game up he's taken advantage of the opportunity this season to play alongside uh, William Nylander and John Tavares on that second line and he got the bump up uh, on Saturday night to play beside Austin Matthews and Michael Bunting and he took full advantage he looked right like he fit right in there and he could be a pretty safe bet right now for recording a point recording an assist even maybe a goal if you guys are feeling really bold so keep an eye on on Kerfoot and keep an eye on Matthews tonight. Yeah, I think a lot of goals are going to be scored in this one. The total has actually gone over in eight of the Leafs' last 11 games. So we've been seeing these, uh, you know, these uh, goal fests where both these, you know, whoever they play against, they're going back and forth in terms of goals. And I do expect Matthews to have, you know, at least one, if not two again, in a game where uh, a lot of the offensive firepower is going to fall on his stick. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, if you bet on the Leafs, yeah, good luck. We uh, We definitely like that bet tonight. Okay, moving on now to the other Toronto team in action, the Raptors. And I told you off air, Mike, I was a little surprised that this line was as low as it was. Phoenix has come into town, and Phoenix is a pretty good team, and the Raptors could be without uh, uh, Gary Trent Jr. and Scotty Barnes. Now, they're both uh, questionable, so there still is a chance they can both play. But assuming they're out, the Suns, minus 4.5 on the road against the Raptors. The Raptors are red hot, so do you like them to continue and cover this number and maybe even win the game yeah see this is this is interesting because we've you know pumped the raptors tires for the last week um obviously they've won six straight games you know the play of fred van vliet the play of pascal siakam the way that this team looks in general it's a lot you know to get excited about but another underlying factor that we've sort of touched on is this team has caught a ton of breaks in that the teams that they're playing are teams that are missing guys. You think about that Bucks game where they were missing Giannis, or they're playing against, you know, straight up weak teams right now in, in the league. So I'm interested to see if tonight is sort of that kind of trap, Luca, where you kind of give, you know, that little decent spread of four and a half and see if guys will bite on the Raptors to continue their hot streak, especially at home. You know, they have a lot of experience not playing in front of fans and they've played really well at Scotiabank Arena in general, but I don't think that they've been tested like this, like this Phoenix Suns team in quite some time. I know they're even dating back to, to last month and, and like a month ago, this team's been playing really well, but even then, I'm not sure if there's any real threat that they kind of beat with when they're full strength, and it looks like this Suns team will be full strength tonight. So I am going to be hesitant tonight to place money on the Raptors, Luca. How about you? 
Yeah, Vegas definitely knows something that we don't. I mean, just to give a point for each team here, uh, the Raptors have been a pretty safe bet against the spread. They're six and one against the spread in their last seven, but also the Suns, 14 and two against the spread in their last 16 against the Raptors. So typically the Suns have had their number against the Raptors as of late. And we know the Raptors have had some pretty good teams, you know, during this time span. Yeah, I agree with you, Mike. I think this is a game that I'm just going to stay away from completely. And I'm interested to see, you know, what the Raptors are going to do because they have caught breaks. They have played teams that they should beat. Even going back to that Bucks game when Giannis was out, this is going to be their first true game, if you will, in a couple weeks time where they are going up against a very worthy opponent that are coming in healthy. You're going to be going up against, you know, Chris Paul, Booker, Aiden, et cetera. And this is a deep Suns team. We know this is, you know, a title contender. Once again, they have shown there are no flash in the pan. They're up there with the Warriors, you know, in the Western Conference trying to get that number one spot. So this is the game that's going to really prove to me what kind of direction the Raptors are going in. Are they the, you know, beneficiaries of just having, you know, a lot of good breaks? Or is this team, in fact, legit? And have they turned the page? And can they do it here now against a legitimate team in the Phoenix Suns? So I think I'm going to stay away from this one. But, but yeah, I don't know. When I first saw this line, seeing the Suns just at four and a half, considering the Raptors could be undermanned too, something's up. But, hey, the Raptors undefeated in the new year, undefeated with no fans. And you cannot ignore what... Siakam and Fred Van Vliet are doing and I, I guess this is Vegas's way of you know giving the Raptors uh you know their their flowers and really showing them some respect with this line because they are buying into what the Raptors star players have been doing and they know Fred Van Vliet right now is on a hot streak they know he's playing out of his mind they know Siakam has been you know a guarantee you know double figure double rebound guy and they're definitely riding this Raptor streak so yeah they want to see if people are going to bite on this I mean, I guess to not be super boring, if I had to make a pick, <laughs> I, I guess I would ride with the Suns. And uh, I know I've been playing against the Raptors the last couple of shows, but I just think this is too good to be true. And I think the Suns will win. It'll, it'll still be close. It's not going to be a blowout, but I can see the Suns maybe winning between that six to 10 point mark, but we'll see. I mean, if the Raptors pull this one off, Mike, I'm all in. I'm sold. I, you know, this team, get excited about them again. They're going places. Yeah, I think this is sort of that defining game, right? As as you mentioned, it's uh it's one that can really propel them forward. And I think what I'm predicting is if the Raptors end up do getting this win here today, I think Vegas will pay even more respect to the Raptors. They'll give them even more respect. And you're not gonna see a lot of more favorable lines. Because like I said, this is a, a real test for the Raptors, one they haven't had in a very long time. And we'll see if they can they can come through. What I will add is, you know, it's a it's pretty crazy stat, but the Raptors right now are the first team in 46 years to have five players average above 15 points per game. Crazy. So you know, on a on a night when Fred Van Vliet's not doing it or Pascal Siakam's not doing it, you have the Scotty Barnes, you have the Gary Trent Juniors that are stepping up, you have the OG Ananobis that are also doing it. But if the Raptors don't have Barnes, if they don't have Gary Trent. That's where I become a little bit nervy. I think last game against the Pelicans, when they didn't have Gary Trent, I think they got exposed a little bit in terms of they weren't able to spread the court as much as they wanted to. They weren't able to have that guy who kind of create his own shot when they needed to, when Fred Van Vliet or Siakam weren't going. So if they don't have either of those guys, I'm with you there, Luca. I think take that, that Phoenix Suns. But if they do, I wouldn't be too too blown away if you choose the Raptors here against the Suns, who are, like you said, one of the best teams in the NBA, one of the favorites right now to take home the, the championship. Yeah, crazy stuff right now where the Raptors are headed. It's great to see, though, because it looked like it was maybe going to be another one of those lost seasons, you know, fall into the plan, maybe even lower than that. And we're talking about ping pong balls. But all of a sudden we're talking about can the Raptors be contenders and are they going to, you know, be buyers instead of sellers at the trade deadline? We'll save that conversation for another show. But we're going to actually switch gears now to the other Toronto team, Toronto FC, they have traded the third overall pick and Dom Dwyer to FC Dallas in exchange for 50,000 in general allocation money. Um, so uh, after this happened, Dwyer was immediately bought out by uh, Dallas. So uh, just fill us in, Mike, why did TFC do this deal and what's next for Dom Dwyer? Yeah, no, that's, that's a good question because at base value, you're kind of scratching your head based on the salary numbers that were, reported last season about Don Dwyer's contract in his first, he signed a two-year deal with TFC last year. 
Um, and this is a guy who's coming off a serious knee injury. So TFC kind of took a little bit of a gamble on him. He, this is a guy who used to be a designated player in major league soccer. Um, you know, one of the most prolific goal scorers in MLS history, but he was never able to sort of recover from that knee injury the way the TFC wanted. So they gave him a two year deal, um, brought him into training camp and they liked what they saw. He recovered. He was back to, you know, running and whatnot. So they gave him that first year at league minimum. And really, everyone expected that second year to come in at league minimum as well. But what I've been told, Luca, is that second year was a massive pay increase. And, you know, the reported figures out there are around three hundred to 500000 which is significant in a salary budget league like Major League Soccer. That's a, that's a decent penny. And for a guy that did not even score a goal last year, only had a handful of shots on target, um, it, it was TFC had to get out of that contract. It was a mistake by by general manager Ali Curtis to sign Dom Dwyer to that deal. Um, obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty, but we can clearly say that now. So sometimes, like you have to do in in hockey or basketball, if you have a bad contract on your team, you have to attach another asset to get rid of that contract, and that's what we saw happen. Where TFC unfortunately had to give up the third overall pick in yeah. the MLS Super Draft, which is, you know, MLS Super Draft. It it's not the best draft out there. There's not too much talent that comes from it. But you can often find gems. And you think about players like Tejan Buchanan, Richie Larea, who we talked about on this show. You know, there are some quality players, especially that high up the draft that you can find and some value players because there's guys who you can essentially draft that won't count against your salary budget. It's, it's a bit of a complicated process. But overall, the, the, the motto is, or the MO and the rundown of this trade is TFC had to give up an asset to get rid of Dom Dwyer, which they did, and he was bought out by by FC Dallas. Now, what's next for Dwyer? I'm not sure. Maybe he takes a league minimum again somewhere else to try and bounce back, bet on himself. But it was not looking good for him at, at that point, especially when you consider a team like Dallas isn't even willing to keep him around. I'm always interested to see how teams do get out of bad contracts. Just like relaying this back to the other team we talked about previously, the Raptors, right? They got Goran Dragic, but he's making a ton of coins. So, you know, it's been a struggle to try to get him out. It's like, how are you going to get him out? What are you going to take back? So in this case, yeah, like you said, TFC was basically handcuffed. They had to include that third overall pick. And now at least, you know, they're in an ideal situation. In terms of TFC, over the next couple of months, do you see them making any more significant moves or do you think this is relatively it? No, they're going to be making, they're going to be making plenty of moves, man. Um, there's a lot of turnover that has to be happening on this roster. And I'm going to say that it's not only going to be players coming in, it's going to be players going out. I think at this time they have about seven spaces on their roster to fill. And then I also hear that there are still going to be people uh, leaving the, the the, the club so we'll see kind of what happens there and kind of how that plays out but i expect a lot of movement right now uh from toronto fc between now and the beginning of the season i mean you're the tfc insider so like is there any uh rumor that you can you know maybe have a good uh feed on or you're just gonna keep it gonna keep it at, at bay as of now <laughs> Um, well, I'll say what, what Bill Manning said was that Toronto FC is looking to potentially add a couple of Canadian men's national team players. Um, so that'll be interesting to see kind of how that plays out. There's a lot of talent in, in Canada, of course. And also I'll add that there's, they're definitely still scouring Italy for some talent. I don't think the Andrea Bellotti rumors are legitimate at this point, at least there's nothing that's really come to the table for TFC is what I'm being told. I'm, I'm hearing he wants a little bit too much money, but um, there are other names in Italy that they're looking at, like like Domenico Crescito and and uh, Mattia D uh, Destro, which is another name that they're looking at. So a couple of quality Italians there, Luca, for you. And uh, we'll see kind of how they, they kind of go forward and see if they get any of those deals across the finish line. That's music to my ears, Mike. Music to my ears. <laughs> All right, we're going to... Now end with our best bet. Like we said at the top of the show, Mike, you got to get on the board here with a winner. You have the honor of going first. You looked at all the games. Funny. Who's your pick? Can we rename this to worst bet of the night? <laughs> because right now that's kind of the way I'm going. It's 0-2 right now. Um, you know, like I said, the Bucks let me down last night, but I'm going to stick with the association tonight. Going to stick with the NBA. And I'm liking, because I made money on them Sunday night, I'm going to go back there. And I'm liking the Golden State Warriors at Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, Golden State, one and a half point favorites right now. 
And I think they're going to cover that. They're right. They're a team that kind of got a little bit of momentum, especially with the addition of Clay Thompson. And I know John Morant and, and the Grizzlies right now are playing out of their minds, but they're not the Golden State Warriors. And the Golden State Warriors are one of the best team probably in basketball right now. So at one and a half points, I think that's always a tempting number. And I'm going to go for it. Let's, let's take Golden State to cover that. Wow. So this is going to make for the most interesting bet of the night segment to date because without talking to mike my best head bet of the head, night eh? is actually going the other way i like the grizzlies here let's i go. like the grizzlies here so we're get we're guaranteed a winner which is good for the people at home but yeah this is a <laughs> spot i know for the warriors they get clay thompson back you know how can you bet against the warriors well right now the grizzlies they've won nine games they're incredibly hot six of their last eight at home they have shown that they can play the Warriors tough. And this is a Grizzlies team that have beaten the Warriors a couple of times in their last meetings. And every time these two teams meet, you know it's going to be close. So the Grizzlies, you know, they've been on a roll during this win streak, averaging, you know, close to 120 points per game. Their defense has been incredible. Their rebounding has been, you know, a, a, a treat to watch. You know, the second chance opportunities they give their team. And then John Moran, I mean, you see this guy, he's a highlight reel. Jumping for the ball, you know, making incredible plays, playing like a superstar, really. And it's great to see this Grizzlies team really blossom because nobody expected them to be this good or, uh, good early on. A lot of people knew that they had good young talent, well-coached, all that. But the fact that right now they are just beating good teams, you know, nine games, nine wins in a row. They're in fourth in the West. They're turning heads. This Grizzlies team, they look like they're ready to contend right now. So I do like... Uh, the Grizzlies here and Draymond Green is questionable. So if he's unable to go in this one, I like the Grizzlies even more because I think that's going to be a huge loss for the Warriors um, in, t in terms of their defense. And I just think, you know, Clay Thompson being there, it's going to take a few games for him to get back. I know it was nice to, you know, see him back out there on the court on Sunday, but he didn't shoot particularly well from the field. And as expected, I mean, he hasn't played basketball in almost three years. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a work in progress to get him back in. So uh, I think the Grizzlies are going to take advantage of that at home going up against the Warriors. They will continue their winning ways. So we'll see who gets the W here, Mike, you or I bring it on, bring it on, buddy. Let's go. I like it. I like it. We will see, but uh, everybody, thank you so much for watching the latest installment of Toronto today here on the parlay. You can follow us all over social media. We come at you every single day with Toronto talk and more. You don't want to miss it on behalf of myself and Mike. Thank you so much for watching. This is Toronto Today here on The Parlay. We'll see you all again in the next one.